If you've ever gotten tangled up in your sling, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is out of control. There's nothing that I can do to control you guys. Do your own thing and find out why the comment section is the best part of this channel. <laughs> if you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents for the first month. Get in there, find out why it rocks. Another support we have is Acre Gold. Buy gold for yourself comes in little bars, pretty awesome. Gold is pretty inflation proof. Finally, we have Vertex for sick gloves, bags, and gear, and all that kind of stuff. Ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, M1917 Revolvers, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about a pistol caliber carbine that we've previously talked about, and that is going to be the CZ Scorpion. So. The CZ Scorpion is a very cool platform. Now, when I first reviewed it, I was dissatisfied with a lot of the um, kind of design choices they had made on the Scorpion. But the cool thing about the CZ Scorpion is that there's a lot of aftermarket support for it. So I thought I'd give the Scorpion another go after I did a complete kind of upgrade through third-party products to make it what it is right now. And we'll kind of see how this you know compares now to the old Scorpion, if it's worth it or not, all that kind of good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, before we do, um, full disclosure, like I always do, what are my relationships with these companies? CZ, nothing really there. Um, a lot of the products on this particular weapon are from HB Industries. Um, when it comes to them, I bought many of the products. However, do be aware that they did send some of the products that I am using in this weapon. I'll talk about which ones they sent, but it's about half and half of what I bought versus what I, uh, what I was given. Besides that, um, the stock adapter is made by Reptilia, which is made by a good uh, friend of mine um, over at Reptilia, and they make really good stuff. So understand there is a, you know, that relationship there. But nonetheless, I'm always um, as unbiased as possible when I do any review. I just want to be as clear as I can about my relationship with these companies. All right, without further ado, <laughs> let's get into the Scorpion and uh, talk a little bit about it. So to start off with, we're going to go... Tip the butt just like the Navy loves. And we're gonna talk about um, everything on this particular weapon, specifically the stuff that I changed and why I think it's better or worse or if it makes any impact at all. So to start off with, um, we have the muzzle device. Now the muzzle device on a nine millimeter, really, you're not really doing any type of compensation. There's not a lot of blast that is coming off of a nine millimeter, especially when it's um, in your shoulder and that type of thing. So. For me, I just wanted something that made it easier to mount up suppressors. Now, when it comes to suppressors on um, pistol caliber carbines, I prefer Trilugs. So Trilug is a really cool design for pistol caliber carbines. I've talked about it before, but it's a simple, it's as simple as lining it up, rotating it over, and then you have your suppressor mounted. Now, in this case, we have a Gemtech uh, Lunar 45 uh, on this particular one. It is for a 45 caliber um, slug. That being said, the 9mm is going to do fine. Not as great of suppression, but um, it definitely still works. I just like it because I can use it on uh, just a lot of different guns out there. But in any case, the muzzle device is from HB. So I did buy the Trilog adapter. Thank you to my Patreon guys. Um, the Trilog adapter is 40 bucks, so it's actually pretty cheap. And that's one thing that I really like about a lot of the upgrades when it comes to the CZ Scorpion is it really doesn't cost a lot. So from there... We have the barrel. The barrel is just the standard seven and three fourths inch barrel from CZ. Um, I didn't really see a need to change it. Now I do want to point out that there are a couple um, really cool modifications you can make to the Scorpion, specifically with the integral and with the uh, miniature versions. Innovative Arms makes a really cool integrally suppressed um, four end for the CZ Scorpion. I think it's a really compelling design. Definitely check them out when it comes to that. I haven't. I don't have any actual time on it. But I will say that my buddies who have it really like it. Now, besides that, HB also makes a CZ Scorpion micro kit that makes this thing about as short as you can possibly imagine. And that, again, is also a really good thing to have. And I like it quite a bit. I'll likely be installing that um, kit on this weapon after I do this review. As far as accuracy is concerned, I've seen a lot of crazy claims on accuracy out of pistol caliber carbines. Accurate enough for the distance it's going to be used. Um, if you're looking... 
using something like this out past 100 meters, uh, you're probably gonna be better off with a 300 black, um, 223 or something like that. Uh, under that, absolutely a pistol caliber carbine makes sense. So within that range, it is definitely an accurate enough weapon system for uh, the range at which it's gonna be used. From there, we have the handguard. So the handguard was one of my biggest complaints when it came to the CZ Scorpion. Um, it kind of angled forward, and what that does is you have less sight, sight radius, less Picatinny rail, all that kind of stuff. And I really didn't like the shape of it that much. It was kind of fat and wide and the Picatinny really just got in the way. I upgraded to the HP Industries Pasque Sapper handguard right here. Now there are a couple different handguards and we'll talk about their purposes right here. Now the Pasque Sapper handguard, um, again, I did purchase this with my own funds. It was like 49 bucks, again, pretty cheap. Um, it is a polymer reinforced handguard. Now there are metal handguards that you can get for the Scorpion. And you probably want a metal handguard if you're intending to mount anything that needs a zero out past the receiver on the Scorpion. Now for me, I wasn't planning on using a PEC or anything like that. I just wanted a simple M-Lock mounting solution that I could use for lights and that type of stuff. So I didn't really need it to, to be, you know, super duper awesome for retaining zero. And that's why I went with the lighter weight option in the Pasque Sapper. Now the metal versions weigh just a teeny bit more, but they're gonna be better at holding zero. So it's all about what do you want out of the handguard for me? Now for me, I just want something that was as light as possible. No biggie when it comes to that. In any case, a little bit about this. You see it has the front little nub right there to ensure that your hand doesn't slip forward. In actual shooting, especially with a suppressor on, I find that I wrap my finger around the front. It works either way. Um, I can aim it this way, uh, you know, put my thumb down. I tend to wrap my thumb up over when I'm shooting this. That's just how I particularly use it. I do wish it was a little bit thinner. I understand there are some kind of limitations when it comes to the CZ Scorpion and kind of the the how thick this thing is because it's kind of dummy thick when it comes to like the the height of this rail overall. So there are other pistol caliber carbines that I think are a little bit not as kind of beefy. So you have like the um, AKV from Palmetto and you also have the Strybog. Strybog, not quite as refined as a Scorpion, but in many ways has some really good qualities to it. I do think if we're gonna do a direct comparison, uh, you know, against the MP5 or the MPX, those are definitely superior systems. However, they do cost a lot more because the CZ Scorpion runs around 850 or so. Then with some upgrades, you're gonna get closer to about a grand, but when it comes to the Strybog, you're getting closer to a grand with the brace on there and everything. And with the AKV, you're looking over a grand with all that good stuff. So understand when it comes to cost wise, it, it definitely outperforms the AKV and the Strybog in certain ways. I and mean, in certain ways it doesn't. We'll kind of talk about those as, a, as we get to them. But when it comes to handguards, I do think that it definitely outperforms both the Strybog and the AKV. Next, we have the charging handle. I use the Delta Extended Charging Handle. It's about 30 bucks or so. Um, the problem with the charging handle on the Scorpion has always been it's very small, very thin. It's kind of hard to get your hands on. So I wanted something that I could would be easier to actuate and kind of move and all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, I have it mounted on the right-hand side versus the left-hand side. And the reason for that is I found that it just gets in my way um, when I'm trying to grip this weapon, even with an extended handguard. So I just ended up moving it to the other side. I'm not really using it that much anyhow, uh, only to clear my function. So I don't mind having it on the right-hand side since I have my bolt release right there. So it's not something that I have to mess with too much, but you need it. And uh, when it comes to the charging handles, the uh, Delta Extended is probably my favorite from HB Industries. Um, now this one was given to me, just so you guys are know, no, there is a polymer one and there is a metal one. Um, Find whichever one suits your fancy, to be honest. So on the receiver, if you need to mount uh, optics or pecs, we have top rail right here on the receiver. The receiver is unchanged. You can see I have an EOTech green model on the top of this weapon. I don't like the green model that much. And because I don't care about it that much, it ends up getting on a lot of weapons. It gets used quite a bit because I don't mind if it gets damaged, but sold up well. EOTechs are good optics. So the CZ Scorpion is a direct blowback weapon. So when we're talking operating systems, that kind of is what ends up separating uh, the different pistol caliber carvings from each other. So the Strybog, well, not the newest Strybog, but the Strybog I reviewed, the CZ Scorpion, the AKV are all direct blowback weapons. It's not a very elegant um, operating system. However, it is incredibly robust. So although you don't have the soft recoil of the piston driven system of the MPX or the roller delayed 
system of the MP5, what you make up for is just incredible reliability. Uh, I have a couple other videos on the Scorpion where I've thrown gravel in the receiver and I've fired this thing underwater and I put you know mud into it and fired it and it will chew through everything. And that is true of most well-built direct blowback weapons. So yes, the Scorpion absolutely recoils more than the MPX and the MP5, but it is reliable and it is a proven system. So it's just kind of what are you going for? Personally, uh, I don't think that the MPX or the MP5 are at all unreliable. So for me, it's not so much a, a concern about these systems because I, cons I consider both those systems to be wholly reliable. So I do consider the recoil on the Scorpion, the Strybog, and the AKV to be excessive for the round that they're firing. In fact, it, they recoil harder than 5.56 carbines. So that is something to think about when you're purchasing a pistol caliber carbine, if you're expecting super soft recoil, it's just not going to be the case. Okay, moving from the operating system, we have the magazine well. The magazine well is unchanged. There isn't anything that I really needed to change about it because CZ did a very good job on beveling the mag well. It's a very easy insertion, no problems there. Another favorite part of the, of the Scorpion for me in one way in which it eclipses most other pistol caliber carbines is the magazine. The magazine design on the Scorpion has kind of been adopted by many other pistol caliber carbines, including the AKV, where they've, they've recognized that it's a good design, it's a strong design, and because of that, there's a lot of aftermarket support for CZ Scorpion magazines. So there are kind of two original type CZ Scorpion magazines. We have kind of the Magpul looking ones right here, and then we have the clear translucent ones right here. Both work equally well. I do believe that the windowed one is a stronger design and it is the magazine that I use most often. Now, many other companies make magazines for the Scorpion. Most famously, PSA makes those 35 rounders for the Scorpion. Now for me personally, I could not get the PSA magazines to run very reliably, uh, maybe by 80% or so. And every other time they'd do a double feed or they'd failure to feed or something like that. So while the PSA magazines work very well in the AKV, and the CZ magazines work well in the AKV, it's not the other way around. The PSA magazines, at least for me, in my sample size, have not worked very well with the CZ Scorpion. Now, it might just be me, right? It might be doing something wrong, but it's something that I want to throw out there. Now, besides the magazine well, we have the latch right here. So I got the ductile latch um, for my Scorpion. The reason for that is it allows you to one hand uh, change up the magazine. So if you need to switch magazines, if you're gonna do the V method or the L method, it's an easier press to disengage it with your finger. That way you're not having to use your thumb to do all your reloads. Now I will admit that for the most part, I do my reloads primarily with um, my reloading. I rip the magazine out, insert the new one, but it's a nice option to have and it makes it just a little bit easier. Of course, a more traditional AR-15 type magazine release would be easier to use. However, um, in a variety of bad conditions, mud, snow, freezing rain, all that kind of stuff. The latch mechanism for magazines tends to work better. It tends not to freeze up. So I can appreciate why they use that because the CZ Scorpion was designed to be a military weapon. And in that case, it is a very reliable system. I can appreciate these certain design elements that they have on the Scorpion. Now, I didn't change anything design-wise on the Scorpion that would in any way make it unreliable. So understand that this doesn't have effect upon reliability. Rather, I'm just commenting on why they use a paddle release versus a button release on the Scorpion. Moving from there, uh, I didn't see the need to change anything on the bolt release. So when the weapon hits the last round, you hit the bolt locks back. Once you insert a fresh magazine, you can simply press down on this. The Strybog has a very similar, albeit much more, what's the word for it? Much more simple system that is not nearly as refined as a Scorpion. So in that way, I find the Scorpion a lot easier to reload. And pretty much every pistol caliber carbine is infinitely easier to reload compared to the MP5. So it's definitely a step up. The biggest problem that I had with the Scorpion for the longest time was that the pistol grip was angled pretty hard. And then also the safety levers were quite long. The problem with that was that whenever I disengaged the safety to fire, that would dig into my hand. I'd always get like, a, it always rubbed my hand raw and it just was not a good time. So one thing that I've done is I 
use the safeties from HB Industries to upgrade my Scorpion. So I use the Evo 3 Scorpion safety right here. And then on the opposite side, I use one of their safety deleters. That way I didn't have a safety on that side. I really don't need it for what I'm doing. So that's how I have mine set up. I don't, it no longer digs into my hand. And another thing that is good is I swapped out the grip. So the grip on the Scorpion, in my opinion, is not great. I think it could be a lot better. So I upgraded this to the Pasque Pathfinder grip, and that is a much better grip angle. You can see how um, shallow that grip angle is. And for the type of shooting that you're gonna be doing with the Scorpion, that is the perfect angle. So I very much so like that on the Scorpion. And again, the Pathfinder grip is like 29 bucks and the safety selector is around 30, I believe. So next up we have the trigger. So the trigger right here is the Theta Forward Trigger from HB, along with their Trigger Pull Reduction Kit. So the trigger itself was like 29 bucks, and then the Spring Reduction Kit to reduce the trigger pull down to 5.5 pounds was around nine bucks. So pretty um, cheap overall prices for a pretty big upgrade to the Scorpion, because the trigger is pretty bad on the original Scorpion. So. The trigger is flat face. That kind of reduces the, the feel of the trigger pull by about 12% or so, according to them using science and witchcraft and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead, let's go set trigger together and let's see how that actually feels. So make sure it's clear. All right, let's go ahead and put your finger right over mine. We're gonna play a little Unchained Melody. Feel that out. Okay, so take up is around three, four millimeters, five, six, Six millimeters of play, very nice let off. So you definitely come into about the first three or four pounds in that take up and then the let off is around maybe a pound and a half, two pounds. Feeling that one more time. Yeah, that let off is really nice. Let's feel the reset. About five millimeters. And then once you hit that reset, you've taken up a lot of that slack. So when you're firing this fast, you'll find that that trigger pull is maybe about two, three-ish pounds or so. It's not bad. It's much better than the Scorpion trigger. But that being said, it's still not great. The Scorpion doesn't have a wonderful trigger. So if you compare that trigger to, let's say, Strybog, out of the box, the Strybog has a better trigger. Compare that to the AKV. Again, the great thing about the AKV was that it uses components from the AK. Because of that, you have triggers that are much more refined. So using the ALG triggers and those AKVs, the AKV trigger is phenomenal. Now, that being said, there are other companies that make some really good trigger kits from the Scorpion, and I have not had the chance to use them all. So I understand I could be maybe not using the best, but I think that the when it comes to triggers, that it is outclassed by other pistol caliber carbines. Okay, moving from all of that, we get to the very end here. So on the end, we have a Magpul Zukov stock, which is for the AK, and we have an adapter from Reptilia. Reptilia is a great company. They do a lot of really cool things. Definitely check them out. But the adapter is very solid. It's well built. I love it. And again, the Zukov stock folds on its own. And yeah, everything you can want from it, easy to deploy, all that kind of stuff. It's adjustable. Um, that is, of course, from Magpul, not from Reptilia. But the adapter is Reptilia, and I definitely recommend the Reptilia mount when it comes to the stock adapter. So overall, what do I think? Well, I think that the Scorpion has come out with perhaps one of the best pistol caliber carbine magazine designs along with the MPX. Besides that, it it performs a little bit better than the Strybog in some ways, and a little bit better than the AKV in some ways. Really what it comes down to is what do you want? And that will kind of steer you between those different pistol caliber carbines in its price class. Nothing is perfect, everything is a trade-off and it's gonna come down to you handling the weapon and playing with it and find out what works for you. And if you have a Scorpion already, definitely check out some of the products from HB Industries. They make some really compelling products, and I'm sure some very cool products will be coming out in the future with the Scorpion that can kind of change the way it kind of works and the different roles that it can fill. So there's definitely a future for the CZ Scorpion. It is not a bad buy. Again, it's all about what you want. And here's the thing, as cool as the Scorpion looks, it's not gonna matter without training. Get out there and get training. You're gonna look stupid with this, as cool as it looks if you don't have training. Tons of great guys out there to give you training. You have Haley Strategic, Not My Dad, Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Pat McNamara, Larry Vickers, tons of guys, 1-1 One One Bravo, Core Solutions. Um, so many great companies out there. Go out there and get that knowledge, get better, and actually practice with your stuff because these weapons are cool, but ultimately your mind is a weapon, right? 
And unless you have sharpened it and made it good, this isn't going to matter. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Love you guys. Appreciate you very much. I've got nothing else for you. Last thing for you guys, um, not really dad advice, but this video right here is the last video um, that I'm taking in this film studio right now. So we've upgraded and I have a whole new film studio now that I'm gonna be moving to with the soundproofing and all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're upgrading. And I can't thank my Patreon people enough for that. You guys have really helped me out and you guys absolutely rock. So it's weird, it's bittersweet. It's the last video in this studio. So uh, it's a little bit surreal to me. Literally after this video, I'm gonna be moving all my stuff over and spending the next week doing lighting and sounding and sound tests and all that kind of stuff. But we're moving up, we're gonna make some better stuff and uh, always excited for the future. Now, if you guys have made it this far, our last thing that we want to talk about is Survival Dispatch. Survival Dispatch is a great resource for survival products. I've done a lot of survival training in my life and I was a survival instructor for a while. Highly recommended that you go and check it out. Um, lots of great stuff that you can learn from it. Guys, thank you so much. You guys absolutely rock. Have yourselves a great day.